What's up guys and welcome to my NVIDIA Shadowplay overview and comparison test. Um, uh, if you don't know what Shadowplay is, it is basically a recorder that works with your H.264 encoder on your graphics card. That is if you have an NVIDIA 600 series or higher and it does not work with laptops as of yet. So if you have like a 670M, it's not going to work. Sorry. But uh, if you do have a desktop graphics card of a 600 series or higher, this will work. So. Very cool stuff here, 1080p, 60fps, and very minimal hit to your, uh, your actual FPS in game. So I was doing some tests, and we'll get to that here in a little bit, but uh, it's like 5-10% to 10 is what they advertise, and that is pretty much right on. So uh, it's a very simple program. It uh, has the basic features. I think they're adding some stuff maybe in the future here and tweaking some things down the line. There's a couple reasons why it's not everybody's primary software right now that has an NVIDIA card, and uh, I'll get into those here in just a second. But a uh, basic overview of this on off, um, this just shows you what folder you're recording to. This is your preferences that brings up this tab right here. Mode, you have shadow and manual, and then you can live stream. Uh, shadow and manual basically means you can hit Alt F11 and start recording in real time what you're doing right there or shadow is recording all the time um, and you can set how much of a, a buffer you want the shadow to have so I could say I want to play a whole game of um, let's say like domination on battlefield 3 or battlefield 4 rather uh, I can just set it for 20 minutes play my whole game just hit alt f12 at the end of the game boom it just save the whole file so very cool stuff. You don't have to worry about hitting record right when you get into your game and having everything set up right away. It's always working for you. So, and especially when you just messing around, you maybe hit a sweet shot and you're like, oh, it wasn't recording. What am I gonna do? Boom! Shadow Play's got it. Got your back. It's like a good friend for everybody that records gameplay out there. So I would recommend just leaving it in shadow and manual. Um, just so you have options. There's no reason to set it one way or the other from what I can tell. So uh, here's your shadow time. I set mine to 15 minutes. That seems to be as long as I ever need. Uh, quality, low, medium, high. I keep it on high. Um, this basically halves the file size. You can see here that's 5.6, 2.5, maybe even a little bit more uh, than halves it, but um, quality high. This isn't as good a quality as you can get with something like DxTory, but the file sizes are so much smaller. Um, it's literally like uh, gigs upon gigs. You can see 15 minutes of 5.6 gigs. That's like 27, 28 gigs in a DxToy file at 1080p 30 FPS. This is 1080p at 60 FPS, so that's very good. And the nice thing about this is you're not losing any quality. I mean, you might be able to tell the difference uh, side by side on your desktop, but and even then, it's very minuscule. But uh, when it gets uploaded to YouTube, nobody will be able to tell the difference. So that's cool. Audio, this is one downfall that it does have. You can record your mic, but it records on the same track as your gameplay audio. This is the number one feature uh, of DxTory, I think, is being able to separate your audio tracks. So until they get this sorted out, I wouldn't recommend it for doing like live comms or uh, gaming with your buddies and wanting to capture, you know, like your team speak audio as well, because it's all going to be jumbled into one thing. So kind of a bummer there but hopefully they improve on that in the future uh, onto the preferences tab this is pretty self-explanatory that's if you want to add a webcam you can just just choose what corner you want it in and then what size and then you can have a status indicator that just says shadow plays recording and if you have that green light in the middle that means you've manually set it to record um, your hotkeys to start recording and start broadcasting uh, the main reason I do not suggest broadcasting to Twitch is because you can't alt tab. You can, but it will turn off your stream. So OBS is still great software. I'm using it actually right now to capture this. And uh, for live streaming, I would say OBS all day until they get something that's really rock solid and has the features that OBS does. Uh, the one thing that this does have going for it is a 1080p 60 FPS. So if they could do something really cool, I don't know if you guys do live streaming out there, but if they could do it like how you can uh, live stream through DxTory into OBS, if they could, you could live stream out of um, Shadowplay into OBS, that would be so brilliant. And I think that would be the only way to go. If you could do 1080p 60 FPS into OBS, 
and have like zero hit on your CPU, holy crap. <laughs> the quality of live streams out there would go through the roof. People that spend a lot of money on streaming PCs would be very upset. So that's the basics of the program. Um, I'm going to go grab some footage, throw it in Vegas, and then we can do some comparisons on file size and quality and just overall usage. Alrighty, see you in a sec. So right off the bat, I was going to show the file size difference. Uh, here's a three minute video from DxTory, six gigs, and that's 1080p 30fps. One from Shadowplay, not even a gig, also three minutes, 1080p, 60 FPS. Awesome stuff. Uh, this is a lifesaver when you're short on hard drive space. So you're asking yourself, would I really want this running in the background all the time? Well, just for example, while I was setting up for this little FPS test, you can see DxTory is running but not recording in the top left, and I just happened to mow down a whole family. Super helpful to capture clips like this when you weren't expecting them. My main problem with having a young 3570K is that it gets bogged down when I have DxToy running. It's so nice to have Shadowplay that takes all that stress off your CPU, so I can have uh, other processing power dedicated to things like TeamSpeak, maybe have music going in the background, I obviously have Battlelog open. So with a game like BO4 that uses about 90% of my CPU already, I'm really limited on what else I can do if I want to record, so it's super nice to have that off my CPU. Alrighty guys, now for the quality test, I did this all on Ultra, uh, starting off with the Shadowplay recording. Obviously you can see DxToy I left running in the top left corner, but it's not recording. So that was my FPS counter, you can compare that to the DxToy recording, and it's also to prove that I'm not recording with DxToy, this is the Shadowplay's quality. Um, uh, I don't know anybody would fake a quality test, but uh, you can see I'm playing on Ultra getting 60 to 90 frames somewhere in there. It's something that was not possible uh, at 1080p 60fps with DxToy on my 3570K at least. So this is a big improvement for me and a huge uh, load off my processor. Alrighty, and here is the DxToy recording. As you can see, we're still on, I think I switched over to the Ultra preset here. Um, and we're using the in-game FPS counter. Uh, it's up to you guys to decide if you can tell a difference in the quality. Personally, I can't, uh, especially when it hits YouTube. There's, uh, I don't think there's any way to really tell. Alrighty guys, if you have any questions about anything I talked about today or even OBS or DxToy or whatever, feel free to always leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to try to help you and answer your question. Um, I'll still be using DxToy for your gaming with friends just to have split audio tracks. That's pretty much something you have to have, I would say. But uh, for just solo gaming from now on, I'm always going to have Shadowplay running in the background because you never know when you're going to hit that sweet YY360 no scope. Whatever, whatever the kids are doing nowadays. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Thanks for watching the video, guys. See ya.